Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Bite. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is zero day stockpiling. If you saw my security predictions for this year, you might remember one of them, which claimed that we'd see a civilian casualty in the cyber cold war. By this, I didn't mean we'd see anyone die from a digital attack. Rather, I meant we'd see some private organization or individual suffer from a breach which leveraged a zero-day vulnerability that a nation state had kept secret. If you followed the security industry, you probably know that there's a rife zero-day marketplace where people buy and sell software vulnerabilities. In fact, nation states themselves purchase zero-day vulnerabilities or find them and then keep those vulnerabilities secret so that they can use them in future uh, digital attacks. The problem with this, in my opinion at least, is by not sharing these issues with vendors, they're putting every citizen in the world at risk. Now today's story covers this topic in that the RAND Corporation recently released a long report attempting to quantify uh, the issue with nation states stockpiling zero-day vulnerabilities. Now, the RAND Corporation isn't able to share a whole lot about how they did this report. Basically, they partnered with an anonymous organization, which was unable to name itself, that had uh, over 200 different zero-day vulnerabilities that they've maintained for the past 14 years. And basically, by monitoring this library of vulnerabilities and new reports or new vulnerabilities that came to this particular organization, uh, RAND was able to come up with some numbers around this zero-day issue. For instance, they say on average a zero-day vulnerability is effective or is zero-day for around 6.9, almost seven years. Now, of course, that's just the average. The report also mentions around 25% of those vulnerabilities become public within a year and a half, whereas another 25% uh, of those vulnerabilities may not become public for up to nine years. So there's a big range for how long these zero-day issues really remain zero-day. Another interesting stat that they shared was it takes on average 22 days for uh, threat actors to weaponize these vulnerabilities once they're shared. Uh, so that means once a researcher reports a new vulnerability in a product, in around 22 days, a nation state or threat actor can have an exploit that actually uses it, which is fairly quick. Now really, one of the main questions this report is trying to answer, or seems to be trying to answer, is whether it's good or bad for nation states to stockpile zero-day vulnerabilities to use in digital attacks. And one of the ways you might measure that is the amount of collisions in zero-day. Now, what I mean by that is a vulnerability when two different people know of this zero-day vulnerability. And that, by the way, is my main worry. If, uh, say, the United States government sits on an iOS hack, the problem is one day a cyber criminal or maybe even an adversary nation state could learn about that hack since Apple hasn't fixed it and then can use that vulnerability against citizens as well. And this is the ultimate problem. If nation states don't disclose vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities, they can put lots of citizens at risk. So anyways, one of the metrics you might use to see whether or not it's worth it for a nation state to stockpile zero-day vulnerabilities for good is whether or not there's often collisions where other people find out about these flaws too. And according to their report, there's only collisions around 5.6% of the time, which seems low. By the way, do know that that's a time-sensitive metric, meaning within one year, there's only a 5.6 chance that somebody else will learn of this flaw. However, they also mentioned that within 14 years, there's a 40% chance that another adversary may learn of the flaw. So this, this metric for collisions it gets bigger as time goes on. Now, the other issue I have with this particular collision metrics is how the RAND study actually came up with it. Basically, they compared uh, this particular unnamed source that had these vulnerabilities against public disclosure. Because they only have one source of zero-day vulnerabilities, they don't know if criminals are holding on to zero-day. They don't know if other nation states have zero-day, which no one knows about. Long story short, they're just comparing one zero-day source Source to public disclosure of vulnerabilities, I don't believe it's a true metric of collision. What I'm really worried about is the criminal actors or the other nation states out there that may have also found these particular vulnerabilities. And those other actors, just like nation states, are not going to disclose
disclose whether or not they know something. So it's impossible for RAND to know if a criminal organization already knows one of these 200 some vulnerabilities. They could only study against when a vulnerability went public for the whole world. So long story short, I actually think this collision metric isn't a true value for how often uh, other actors might learn of the same vulnerability. In any case, if you're a security geek like me, it's a fascinating report. And I do appreciate that the RAND Corporation is trying to put some quantifiable data around this whole idea of governments holding on to zero day. Now, this report seems to suggest that in some cases it's probably okay for governments to stockpile. I don't necessarily agree with all of these conclusions. In fact, I think that the fact that they're missing data, which is what do adversaries know, not just what the public knows, means that they're, they're uh, numbers around collisions aren't perfectly accurate. And yet in the land of zero day, really, we don't often have any quantifiable data at all. By its very nature, people are very secretive about these vulnerabilities when we find them. So it really is interesting to see people put some numbers around zero day. So to conclude, it's a cool report. I'll be sure to have a link to it in the blog post associated with this video. That's it for today's story. Thanks for watching.